my name is Ray Mizaki. I'm a digital solution specialist here at AGFA Radiology Solutions. The purpose of uh, this, our video today is to introduce you to our DR100S, our latest innovation in portable digital imaging. This system, the DR100S, was introduced at RSNA 2019, but the system was developed with a tremendous amount amount of technologist input, user input, so that we were able to produce a product that improves productivity while maintaining outstanding image quality and giving that technologist the productivity tools to make them more, make their lives a little bit easier as they perform their procedures. So the first thing I'll do is take you kind of for a walk around the portable, then we'll get into some of more of the details. First of all, you notice the drive handle here. It is adjustable. If I want to lower this down, I can have service move it down a little bit and change the height of it should the users at one account want that to occur. As we walk around the system, you'll notice we have a nice big, I'll pull this up for us, a nice big 22 inch workstation. It's not just a display, it's an actual workstation on top of the portable. Musica workstation, Alpha Musica, some of the, the best image processing around. So in front of the workstation, we have two holders for wipes and gloves and any other PPE devices that you may need. Underneath the workstation, we also have ample storage should you want to put another box of gloves or maybe some rad bags. Um, here on the side of the portable, we have an apron hook, which will hold up to three aprons. In the front of the portable, we have a bumper. And that bumper, should it come in contact with anything, will automatically stop the portable, and you can't go anywhere until you let go of the handle and then pull back on the portable, and then you're able to continue the drive. The entire system is coated with an antimicrobial coating, which fights off bacteria. A big focus this year on infection control. And the second item I want to show you when it comes to infection control are our cable covers. Very unique in the fact that there are no seams on these covers. They're solid plastic. So no seams for body fluids to enter. No seams where the liquid that you're using to clean the covers would enter. So it's very easy to clean with a single wipe. Just wipe it off and you can be assured that you've got the best cleaning possible on the cable covers. I'm going to swing the portable around. We'll show you a couple more features. Here in the front of the portable, this is our plug, our, our plug to plug the system in the wall and charge it. And if you notice, it's here at waist level as opposed down there at ankle level. So I can easily pull this out and plug it into an outlet, which might, which might be the same height here. So we'll come around. I'm going to show you one more feature on this display before I go too far. Our display is actually tiltable, so I can tilt this down and tilt it up. So, you know, when you take an image, oftentimes you have a referring physician, maybe a nurse, looking over your shoulder to want to see that image and see what a good job you did. Um, so it's, it's, sometimes there is some glare from lights overhead. So if I tilt this, I can eliminate some of that glare. Again, a nice feature that we have on the system. Spin around here. At the tube head, we have a nice 10-inch touchscreen display, which I'm going to describe a little bit more. We have our collimator knobs, and I'll show their use whenever we do. We actually x-ray our patient, which I have set up here in our bed, and we'll do that shortly. Two, uh, two handles with four buttons, and I'll show you the functionality of those here in a little bit. But down here, I want to describe a little bit more in our detector storage area. We've got a lot of different functionality down here. First, we have storage. Storage for a grid. Grab my detector here. <clears throat> Our 14 by 17 detector is easily stored on here. Our 10 by 12 detector. Pediatric detector. Great device. If you have a NICU and you have isolates with cassette trays, this detector will fit perfectly in those cassette trays, assuring that you're going to get very low dose imaging without moving that patient and outstanding image quality. Another feature here in the detector storage area, we have a battery. A battery on board that is charging, whether the portable is plugged in or not, this is constantly charging. With proper use, a technologist will always have a fully charged battery available to them should the battery run low on either one of their detectors. When they are ready to change it and they swap it out, 
they're back up and running in less than one minute. This serves to have extra battery on board without the pins that some other vendors will use at the bottom of these, the storage area. Those pins oftentimes will get broken, they'll get dirty, and sometimes with a lot of the liquids we're using, they will get shorted out. Then you no longer have any charging mechanism. We feel the battery is a perfect option here. We also have two detector locks. These securely lock the detectors on the portable so they cannot be removed. Though rare, sometimes detectors have walked out of hospitals. And if you're parking your portable in a public corridor, sometimes you do have that concern. So you can be assured that the detectors are not going anywhere while they, this is locked. Last feature, or a couple other features, we have a wired exposure handle and a wireless exposure handle. This is a fantastic feature on the system. This wireless exposure handle enables the technologist to move anywhere around the room when they're getting, preparing for exposure. It is grip sensitive. It will not expose unless I have my hand circled around the, the handle. If I put it in my pocket and I would bend over I may, and push on the exposure button, it will not expose because it doesn't sense my grip. Now why would you want to put it in your pocket? Maybe you're doing a baby and you have to hold the baby and expose at the same time, I can pull it out of my pocket and I can expose. Or I have an elderly patient, I'm positioning, I'm afraid they may slide out of the field, so I get them into position, I step back very quickly, pull this out, and I take my exposure. So that's the benefit. Another nice feature on both exposure handles is we have a collimator light, so I can check my collimator field one more time before I take my exposure. I also have a barcode reader here. This barcode reader can correctly identify my patient by scanning the barcode on their R-band. Also can be used for requisition to scan the barcode and identify the patient. This, uh, try, this eliminates the possibility of misidentification of the patient with proper use. And I have an emergency stop button which will shut off the power to the portable itself, but it will maintain the power to the workstation. So we're going to pull around here, and I'm going to prepare to do a patient. I'm going to go ahead and plug in so you can see a view of my screen while I'm working, my music and workstation. So we're going to get around here. And by the way, the drive on the portable is very simple. Um, when this is locked down and I'm driving down the hall, the speed is controlled by the user. So as fast or as slow as I walk, it will go that speed. It's a quiet drive. And when I am driving the system, as you can see, I can see out over top of this portable. I have no column sticking up in front of me that may obstruct my view as I'm going down the hall. So I'm going to connect a wire here real quick, and then we'll get into position to start our patient. make sure we got a good view of the workstation. I want to go over some of the locks on the portable before we actually get into uh, performing the procedure. So first of all, when the tube is down in locked position, you can be assured that this is not going to come out of locked position as you're going any, over any bumps, on and off elevators. I've seen the system ride up ramps and there is no problem, it has plenty of power. When I am ready to pull the, the, the portable tube out of lock position, I grab one or both of the toggles on each of the handles and I will hear a click. When I hear that click, I pull up and I am now out of lock position. I can let go of my toggles, which is highly recommended, so that I can now go up and down and rotate around my column without touching anything but the handles. I'm releasing no locks whatsoever. When I do get into position and I'm ready to get the fine tuning and positioning of my patient, I grab the locks and with the locks, I now can move out and in. I can rotate left and right and I can rotate towards me, away from me, and I can rotate the collimator around. So all that movement with one lock. So again, we're improving productivity for the technologist. One simple lock to get everything into position. 
So we're going to get my patient started here on the work list. Now, we have a view. I'm going to check with my director. We got a view of the workstation, and we have a work list here, which you would obtain from your hospital's EMR his risk system. So we would obtain the work list, and we would have a list of patients. If I were to have a chest X-ray today, you would see Ray Mizaki chest X-ray. And when I select that, I would get. Uh, the view or views to be performed, and it would automatically set an average technique. So today I've selected a patient, and I have a couple views that have already been performed, but I'm going to do another one here, and I have an average technique over on the right-hand side that's all set and ready to go. So we're ready to go. We're ready to x-ray our patient. Now I want to talk a little bit more about this tube head, this 10-inch display, because there's a lot of information up here, and there's a lot of functionality. First of all, I have my patient name up here. So one more time, I can confirm with my patient who they are, make sure I don't x-ray the wrong patient. I have the procedure or procedures to be performed. So if this patient were for a chest and abdomen x-ray, and I chose right now to do the abdomen before the chest, I can make that change here at the collimator head. I have the detector to be used, the 14 by 17. If I'm doing an extremity and I would like to switch that to 10 by 12, I can do it here at the collimator head. I have my DAP control, my KVP and MAS are displayed, my focal spot size, and I have five body size icons here. And the middle one is lit up to indicate that I am using the average technique for this procedure. If the patient were smaller or larger than average, at this point, I can select one of the other four icons, two below or two above average, and I can change the technique. Each step will either cut the mass in half or double the mass. On the right-hand side, I have some other functionality. When I take my x-ray, I'm going to get, it will be displayed here at the 10-inch display. So I will see my view. But if I'm in a room, maybe doing a pediatric patient, and mom and dad are in the room, and I don't want to answer a lot of questions about that image, I can off push a button here to eliminate the display of that image up here at the collimator head. I will still see the image on the main display, but not here. I have a laser light on here. And when I hit that laser light, I have two lines. And as I move my SID, my source to image distance, uh, those two lines get closer together. And when they're superimposed over each other, I now have 40 inches. And this can be set for either 40 or 72 inches. I have collimator light on and off functionality here at the tube head. And I have a button in which it freezes all buttons here so that if I want to wipe this down, I'm now not, not pushing any of those buttons or activating any of those. So let's put our detector back. Now, Agatha has introduced a lot of AI features recently and will be introducing more in the future. And all of these artificial intelligence features are really geared to technologist productivity and improvement. One of them, which is on our system already, is Smart Align. The two numbers that are displayed here at the bottom of the tube, the tube display, are the angulation of the collimator and the angulation of the detector. And when these two numbers are equal, or very, very close to equal, then we have parallel imaging with perpendicular central ray. This assures that if we're doing daily chest x-rays on a patient, we have consistent quality imaging. It also assures that you have excellent air fluid levels whenever you're sending those images to a radiologist for interpretation. And the third benefit, if you're using a grid, which we're using grid a lot less these days thanks to our Musica 3 processing, if we are using a grid, it will reduce that chance of any kind of grid cutoff whenever you're doing these images. So let's grab my detector out of here. I pushed a button at the bottom of my workstation to unlock my detectors so I can pull it out. Here's my 14 by 17 detector, and I have a blue line down here at the bottom. This blue line is always down. So if I'm doing a landscape image on this patient for a chest x-ray, it would be in this kind of configuration. If I'm doing a portrait, I would have it in this type of configuration. 
Well, for my image today, I'm going to put it upside down accidentally so I can demonstrate another SmartXR AI feature. So let's get this behind my patient. Now, a couple more features here at the tube display. When I pulled into the room, if I, in an ER or trauma environment, and there's a lot of equipment in the room, I may not have pulled in quite far enough. So using the buttons here off the handles, I can move my portable forward or backwards, right and left here, right at the tube head. Again, productivity tool for the technologist. They don't have to go all the way back around to here uh, to grab the handle and move the portable. My collimator lights here are controlled by the collimator knobs. The collimator knobs, as soon as I touch one of them, I'm going to get collimator light. So as soon as I touch or turn one of these, I will get a collimator light. So let's get into position to x-ray my patient. <clears throat> I'm going to bring my tube around. One of the first things I want to do is get my angle exactly where I want it to be. So I'm going to flip this up. I'm going to find my angle. As soon as I get that angle real close, I'm going to get a, a green indicator light on here to say those angles are very, very close, if not equal. We're going to go down. I got a pretty good SID here, so I'm going to make some adjustment. There we go. Hey, that looks really good. I'm a good technologist, so I'm going to come down and collimate just a little bit. That looks pretty good. Okay, we're ready for exposure. Now, Again, I'm gonna grab that wireless exposure handle. Great feature, because I can move around the room. If my patient is starting to slide, I can make sure they're secure and then I can take my exposure. I've got a green light here. I've got a green light up here. I've got a green light on my portable and I've got a green light over here on my workstation. And I'm ready for exposure. And once again, I can push this button on my exposure handle Get one more last look at my collimated field before I take exposure. Now, when I do take my exposure, you will hear three audible tones consecutively. That is to assure if you're in an ICU or CCU where you're hearing a lot of beeps, you get three tones consecutively. That tells you you've got your exposure. Also, the green light on my portable will change temporarily to yellow, and then it'll go away, and there will be no illumination. So we're getting ready to take our exposure. You're going to see the image come up on our musical workstation, which is displayed. You're going to also see the image come up on our 10-inch display here at the tube head. So we're getting ready for exposure. Take in a breath and hold it. Three consecutive tones immediately, almost immediately, we see our image come up on our, our workstation. And as you notice, I put it in upside down. I put the detector upside down. But another smart AI feature automatically turned that to correct anatomical position, smart rotate, the second of our features which are on the system today. And like I say, we have more coming out in the future. So the images display true anatomical position by utilizing smart rotate. This applies to chest, abdomens, and distal extremities. Up here at the tube head display, we also have our image displayed. When it did flip up to true anatomical position, it was then displayed. So a good technologist standing here with the exposure handle in his pocket can look at that image. They can confirm they have everything they need. The image looks great. They can grab their detector, spin their tube around, and they're ready to go to the next patient. But what I want to do is come over here to the workstation. We're going to take a good look at my image because I did a heck of a good job. I've got a really nice image. Underneath it, I've got a little uh, yellow rectangle. That yellow rectangle to, indicates to me that I overexposed this patient, probably because my SID was pretty close. I didn't take a good measurement. If it were green, then I met the EI, the exposure index, that was the target for this particular view. But actually, on this patient, I overexposed slightly, and that's why I see yellow. If that yellow indicator was to the left, then I would have slightly underexposed. <clears throat> now, if I see red in either direction, that means I significantly over or underexposed, and that's a definite call to action. Underneath my image, I also have 10 thumbnails. These are quick buttons in which I can put markers on here, rotate the image, magnify the image. 
So if I want to put a left marker on here, it's a simple push, push, click, click, and I've got a left marker. I can put an erect marker on there and anything else I want to do. I can magnify that image. I may have a doctor looking over my shoulder and you know asking me to make that image a little bit bigger because everybody wants to see my good work. And then I can pinch and zoom and I can magnify that even more so that if there is a catheter or a line in here and the doctor wants to see it, we can magnify it up nice and large. Another nice function here is what we call calf processing, catheter processing. This is special processing for tube and line visualization. We are actually compressing the lower frequencies of the image and amplifying the higher frequencies so that we can see the image better and visualize those tubes and lines. So if I click on calf, you're gonna see a change in that image and it will appear a much better, higher resolution image in which I can see those objects a little better. And again, if I wanna magnify it, I can. And there's my calf processed image. There's my regular processed. So for in fact, there is a little catheter in here, which we can see. Now let's go over to the calf processing, and we can zoom that up. There we go. And we can see that catheter very, very well. I will send, if, if this were a true case, I would send both of those images over to the radiologist for interpretation. Another feature here on our system is the ability to, oh, let's go back here. the ability to rotate the image, smart rotate. So we can rotate the image around. Now it doesn't apply too much to my chest x-ray because I position it perfectly, but maybe I'm doing a forearm in which the forearm is from the corner to the corner of the detector. And then rather than have it displayed at an angle, I can rotate it and have it displayed in true anatomical position for that radiologist and interpretation. So we'll cancel out of there. Um, under editing, I have a whole list of markers on the left-hand side and other functions that I can do. Right, left markers, upright, supine, any kind of marker you can think of. I can do free text annotation. I have measurement tools as well as window and leveling that can occur over here on the left side. But speaking of window and leveling, we prefer not to do that. We actually shoot to have best image first up on all our products that we sell. So I believe this is the best image and I'm happy with it. I've got all my markers on here. I've got two images that I can send, one catheter processing, one not, and I go over to the far right and I can close and send all, and that will send those images over to the PAX workstation. Now, another feature here on the workstation that is fantastic, if a technologist has to go into their EMR, their HIS or their RIS to start a procedure and end a procedure, whenever they do start and end that examination, they can access the RIS right here on the workstation. With a single push of a button, it can take them right to the login screen for maybe EPIC, which is a commonly used EMR. They also have the advantage here to access their PAC system directly on this workstation with a push of a button. So we can set it up so that with a push of a button, they can go right to their PAX system. So maybe they're using a Sectra PAX or a, a McKesson PAX. They can go directly to that PAX login system, go into the PAX system, and maybe see yesterday's examination before they do today's. So that completes our presentation of the DR100S Portable. So I would recommend if you want any more information, you contact your digital sales representative or you look online at Agfo Radiology Solutions for more information. Thanks for your time today and have a great day.